Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. Today is our lesson number 10. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are right now on page number 10, I believe. Page number 9. Could you please turn to it? Page number 9. We are in the process of learning how to deal with the addition and subtraction of decimals. Before we talk about, before we go dive into actual addition and subtraction of decimals, let's first quickly understand the fundamental concept that we need to keep at our, uh, the forefront of our, our thoughts when we're, when we're doing addition and subtraction of decimals. And those concepts are understanding our tenths, our hundreds, our thousands, and then finally the digits on the left hand side of the decimal, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. For example, for example, if we are given something like this, 4, 3, 2, 1, like that here, 4, 4 point 3 to 1, 4 point 3 to 1, the very first thing, the very first thing I want to emphasize is, is I want you to, is the fact that uh, uh, a lot of the time people end up misreading it. You must know how the decimals are to be read. A quantity such as this one is not to be read as 4.321. One does not read that as 4.321. That will be wrong. The proper way to read decimals is to read every single digits, every single digit that is, individually. Anything that comes after the decimal point, anything that comes after the decimal point to the right has to be read individually. So this is to be read as 4.321. 4.321, one more time, not 4.321, uh, not 4.321. Do you understand? 4.321. What does 3 represent? Well, 3 tells us this year because if because of the fact that it comes after the decimal it tells us how many tenths we have we have we have three tenths that's why point three this point three is your right there point three this represents that we have two one hundred two one hundred and hence we have so far three two and then finally this one tells us that we have one one thousand one one thousand and hence hence point three two one Therefore, this digit right here is called the tenth digit, the tenth with the th, tenth digit, and then we have the hundredth digit because it tells us we have two one hundredths, and finally we have the thousand and then thousandth, so thousandth digit. When we get to the left, left, left of the decimal. For example, if we end up one, we have one, two, three, four, so five and six, let's be creative. So this is a thousand digit, this is a hundred digit, this is ten digits, and this is unit digit. This is ten, this is tens digit, tens digit, because it tells us how many tens we have. We have five tens, we have five tens, this is the unit digit, this is the units digits, unit digits. Sometimes some people refer, refer to this as ones digit, which is fine, because it tells us how many ones we have. We have four ones, we have four ones. We have six one hundred, so this is hundreds digit, and this is thousands, thousands digit, with an S, thousands digit, because it tells us how many thousands we have. We have seven thousand and six one hundreds. But the important part to keep in mind is to, when we get to the right hand side of the decimal point, it is the tenth, with the TH at the end, tenth, the hundredth, the thousandth, digit and the digits have to be read individually. Let's get going. Let's get going. We're going to do the problem that you see there, the examples that we see there on page number 9. On page number 9. Actually the very first problem that we're going to do appears actually at the very bottom of page number 8. Very bottom of page number 8. The example number one, which says 2.6 versus plus 3.1. Adding adding the two numbers with the decimals is no different than adding the two numbers without the decimal. This is same as adding 26 and 31. You just have to keep track of your decimal. In, in a simple scenario like this, is very simple. 6 plus 1 is 7. 
your decimal is right here, so you line up your decimal and five. As long as you keep your work clean, it's very straightforward, very simple, nothing to it. Example number two. Example number two. I'm not I'm not going in anywhere, I'm still in the room. Example number two. Five plus twelve point three four. Now this is this is this is very silly because it's simply five plus twelve is seventeen and then point three four that's what it is, point three four. But if you did want to have to, if you did need to show your work, it'd be five plus twelve point three four. And what we need to do at this point is, what we need to do at this point is to put down the decimal here and insert the two zeros. But I understand that what I'm what I'm doing right now is actually very childish. I understand I'm fully cognizant of it. But what I'm about what I'm doing right now is quite infantile because we already know the answer. Five plus twelve is seventeen. It's right here. So this is just going to be thirty-four. And again, five plus twelve is seventeen. Number three. So we are on page number nine now. Example number three. Example number three, we have 7.21, 7.21 minus 4.01. So now we are subtracting minus. Let's see what we can do. Again, nothing changes, it's going to be the same as before. Just as same as if you were subtracting 721. If you were subtracting 401 from the 721, the same procedure will apply. You simply have to keep track of your decimal. That's why it's important to line up your digits properly. That's the important part. As long as you line up your digits properly, as long as you line up your decimal point properly, the rest is very simple. And if there is an empty spot, just stick zeros there to hold the place so you can see it visually. That's, it serves as a visual aid so that you don't end up mucking it up. Do you understand? Mucking it up with an M, not an F. One, one minus one is zero, two, two minus zero is going to be two, and finally seven minus four is going to be three. That's your answer. 3.2 is our answer. Let's do the next one, example number four. Example number four says 12 minus 8.99. 12 minus 8.99. We know, we know that 12 minus nine is exactly three. 12 minus 9, okay, listen carefully, 12 minus 9 is exactly 3, but we're not subtracting 9, we're subtracting 8.99, 8.99 is 0 0.01 less than 9. So, instead of 12, 12 minus 9 is 3, instead of, instead of 3, this quantity is going to be 3, and then this extra 0 0.01 that we have here, because it's, 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 it's 8.99, not 9, so you just take the extra 0 0.01. No need to actually do it out, you understand? Let's do some... Let's do some. Let's do some sample problems that you see on page number ten. On page number ten. Number one. Nine point two plus. 7.55 Again, before we before we look, lose track of our decimal, let's take a zero here so that you can see it. It's easier to see now. Now the rest is very simple. Zero plus five is five. Two plus seven, five is seven. And this is just 16. Nine plus seven is 16. It's very simple, very straightforward. Number two. 2.5 2. 5, 2. 2. 258 plus 64.58. So we have 64.58, and then we are adding to it 2.258. This is the part where you have to pay attention as I keep repeating like a parrot to keep track of your decimals to make sure all the digits line up properly, all the tenths digits have to be lined, uh, lined up properly, all the hundreds digits have to be lined up, and so forth. And if you have an empty spot, let's take a zero. It helps to see it. Stick a zero. It helps to see it. The rest is very simple, very straightforward. Now, had it been a real exam, had it been a real exam, let, let me tell you what. Uh, let me just uh, break into a little, little quick pep talk here because every sub problem that we solve here, literally solve it. You don't have to actually do it in the real exam. You don't actually have to literally solve every single thing there because it's a multiple choice exam. The bloody thing is a multiple choice exam. Nobody's asking us. Nobody's asking us what 64.58 
plus 2.58 is? Nobody's asking us that question. What they're asking here is, can you recognize among the four answer choices, which of, the, which of these four answer choices might be the answer to that question? But well, that's quite straightforward. This is, this, is, this is 64 plus 2, 64 plus 2 is 66. 66 and then 0.2 and 0.5, eight. that's 0.5, it is almost 0.6, this is almost 0.3. It's going to be about under 1, it's going to be about 67. It's going to be slightly under 67, it's going to be six, slightly under 67 because 0 0.58, 58 and 26, if you round it up, it's going to be under, under 100. So it's going to be slightly under, point six, uh, slightly under 67. If you find one answer choice that is just a little less than 67, that's your answer. Because 2 plus 64 is 66 and this is going to be another one. Let's do it out. 0 plus 8 is 8. 8, five, eight plus 5 is 13. 3, carry 1. You see how things have uh, to line up properly here? 7 plus 8 is 7 plus 1 is 8. And then here we have 6 and 6. You see 66, 66.8. Well, that's pretty close to 67. That's pretty close. Well, as we said, it's going to be slightly under 67. And if you can recognize one answer choice, that happens to be just a slight, and there happens to be only one answer choice that meets this criterion, criterion, not criteria, criterion, that it has to be slightly under 67, then you're done. Let's do the next one. Number three. Number three, we have 892.2 plus 56. There is really nothing to do here. You just simply, we simply add up, I want to make sure that I read it properly. Yes, we simply add up 892 and 60, uh, 56 because this is just zero. So the point 0.2 is just going to come down. It's not going to do anything. So it's just going to be point 0.2. 2 plus 6 is 8. Make sure you bring out the decimal. 9 plus 4 is, 9 plus 5 is 14. 4, carry 1. And that's just going to be 9. 948, 948.2. Let's do the next one, number 4. 22 plus, 22 plus 3.26. Well, 22 plus 3.26 is very simple. It's just 22 plus 3, which is 25. And then you got 0 0.26. That's all. Let's do number 5. Number 5 has three quantities. Let's do it here. Eight point five plus seven point five five plus fourteen. Again, in the real exam, in the real exam, we don't actually have to do it out. You can very quickly approximate, which is a smart thing to do, which is a quick thing to do, more efficient thing to do. Eight point five, eight point five, and seven point five. I hope you are able to see. This 0.5 can go here and this will become 8. 7.5 point plus 0.5 is 8. 7.5 and, and a half is 8. So this is 8.5 and 7.5 is just going to be 8. It's same as 8 plus 8. This is same as 8 plus 8. So this is 16 approximately. 16. And then this is 14. So it's 16 plus 14. 16 plus 14. The answer is going to be approximately 30. The answer is going to be approximately 30. So if you find one answer choice that is close to 30, that's your answer. It's only, it's only when you happen to find more than one answer choices that are close to 30 and you're unable to tell from your work whether the answer, the approximation that you did, we are saying that the answer is going to be approximately 30 and if you're unable to tell whether that's an underestimation or an overestimation, in other words you're unable to ascertain whether the correct answer should be little over 30 or little under 30 and there happen to be two answer choices, one is slightly under 30 and the other one is slightly over 30. Only in that scenario, only in that scenario to waste your time, spend your time to actually do out the bloody thing. Do you understand? Here I hope you are able to see that it's going to be slightly more than 30 because 0.5 and 0.55 is more than one. It's going to be slightly more than 30. 8.5 plus 7.55 plus 14. This is, this is the idea. This is, this is where it comes in. You have to keep your work neat and clean and keep it organized. Everything has to be labeled. Everything has to be lined up properly. And if you see any empty spot, fill them out. This is zero here. This is zero here. If it helps, fill them all out. 
if it helps. That way you don't want you don't want to mess it up because everything has a place now, everything is occupied. Just simply now we simply have to add up all the digits. We're starting with the hundred digit, then the tenth digit, then the unit digit, and then then the tenth digit. So that's just zero plus five plus zero is just five. Five plus five is ten, so that's zero. Carry one. Don't try to memorize it, just keep it in your head, write it down there, and then bring the decimal point down immediately. Decimal point has to line up. Seven plus one is seven. Seven plus one is eight. Eight plus one is sixteen. Sixteen plus four is twenty, which is exactly what we're doing here. Sixteen plus four is twenty. So that's zero and carry two. That's where our thirty was coming from. That two and this one is going to give us three. The answer is thirty point zero five. That's the exact answer. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.